Man, oh man, how do I even feel about that one? That was a game filled with so much frustration, excitement, and an ultimate turn of events that sees the Canucks lose 4-3 to three in overtime. To guess who? It's the guy who is due. It's Pierre-Luc Dubois, who is playing in his, what is this, his third game as a Winnipeg Jet. And he finally gets a whole bunch of points. He's starting out here with zero points on the Jets so far. And what does he do in this one? Oh, he gets himself two goals, an assist. He draws a penalty that I believe leads to a goal. And then he gets the overtime winner. Bro, Pierre-Luc Dubois, why did you have to wait against this one to start coming alive as a member of the Winnipeg Jets? My ultimate conclusion for this game isn't the fact that Elias Pettersson is good at hockey or that Pierre-Luc Dubois is good at hockey or that Holtby is this or Hellebuck is that. No, my conclusion for this game is that the Vancouver Canucks cannot play overtime. The Canucks have played overtime three times this season. The first time it was against the Montreal Canadiens in their first game, I believe it was their first game in Rogers Arena, something like that. And they won in a shootout. That one was action-packed. It was fast-paced. Okay, cool. They got the 6-5 to five victory. The next game in overtime for the Canucks is that Johnny Gaudreau, how do you do, 20 seconds in, he gets it in the back of the net kind of goal. The third game they play overtime, it's this one, where Pierre-Luc Dubois scores like 20, 30 seconds in after the Canucks try to get some good opportunities, which they admittedly do, but it just doesn't go their way. Three on three overtime is kind of a blessing in disguise because even though it is so degrading and stressful to watch for one team, at the end of the day, it does what the format is supposed to do, which is reduce the amount of times games go to a shootout and increase the fun factor. We just want to get this game over with. We just want a winner to be decided. And that's what three on three overtime does. It's just that the Vancouver Canucks have had the short end of the stick two out of the previous three times they've played it, in fact, two times straight, and it does not feel great. This one was a pretty fun game, but it was a lot of classic Canucks stuff coming back, and uh, yeah, you don't even need me to explain why I'm saying that, because the Canucks had a two-goal lead, they blew a two-goal lead, they barely tied things up in regulation, and then they lost in overtime, because of course they did. The ultimate Canucks game right here, you know? I should be kind of happy, right? I should be happy that, oh, they got a point, they scored a goal with several seconds left to tie things up in the third period, which gives them a loser point here. I should be happy about that, right? But now, if you take a look at it, the Winnipeg Jets get two points. What are they now? Higher than the Canadians in the standings? Yeah! They're up there at 23 points, they're third in the North. Montreal is falling down here, baby, and the Canucks had a big hand in doing that. So you know what? This competitive division, it's really starting to kind of tighten itself up at the top, I guess, and teams that are withering towards the bottom are starting to make themselves known. On to the game, I guess, because I think we do kind of have to talk about that at the very least. This game started off with a hot hand as Zach McEwen went after Derek Forbert. You don't need me to tell you what happened, but last game, Forbert went over there, kind of went after Hoglander for a little bit. The Canucks didn't like that, and Zach McEwen made Forbert pay for that little moment because he absolutely went to town. Several uppercuts, several overhand swings. It was very pleasant to watch, in my opinion. But a few minutes after that, it was Brandon Sutter who wins the face-off. A point shot goes wide. It pops back out on the short side. Connor Hellebuck was not expecting it. And Sutter is right there to bury in the garbage. It's 1-0 Vancouver. And just like the first Vancouver-Winnipeg game, a good chunk of this first period was just Vancouver doing their thing, actually having shots and getting good opportunities. We had Edler and Schmidt with good point shots, the puck bounced off the boards, it went through Hellebuck's legs and out, Besser had a giveaway chance in front, that was a great save by Hellebuck too. And then on the next shift, they score. The puck bounced around in front after a shot. Besser tries to score. It bounces around a little bit more. And then Elias Pedersen is right there. He one time backhands it through his legs on the rebound, and he scores. So that's a goal by PD assisted by Besser and Miller right there. And the period ends off with a 2-0 Vancouver score. So what do the Canucks do after a great first period of play? They absolutely let things crumble away in the second period. This one had a few good opportunities to start it off again. Miller with a wraparound attempt on an open net was blocked by a jet stick. Miller almost went full Horvat a few minutes after that, toe-dragging it by a guy, but he slid it wide of the net. 
After that, though, it was pretty much mostly Winnipeg. As they started shooting, they started controlling, and Vancouver could not really bounce back. Miller lost the puck behind the Canucks net. Wheeler picked it up, and he found Dubois, who scores his first goal as a member of the Winnipeg Jets. It's a 2-1 to hockey game. And I'm just kind of like, okay, Dubois finally gets the monkey off the back. He is out here. He's playing pretty well. He's moving well. A big guy, big body, big frame, good skills, etc. He finally gets a goal assisted by Blake Wheeler. And towards the end of the second period, the Canucks get a few more chances. It was McEwen out front who had a good shot. The puck slithered away from Hellebuck under the glove and wide of the net. Pedersen, with 15 seconds left, had a very good fast break as well. But I'm just kind of thinking in the back of my head, you know, they're talking about Pierre-Luc Dubois a lot in the broadcast. He's finally got a goal. He's finally got a point. Would it not be so Canucks to let Dubois go out there and start doing a little bit more? And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see about that. The third period starts off, and Hoaglander takes a penalty. The Canucks killed it off, but the Jets look dangerous. Hoaglander had a good rush and a solid scoring chance afterwards. And then you have the Lotto line. They have a great shift, a really good shift with good movement. Besser got it to Miller, who had a great chance to shoot, but he passed it to Petey instead, who wasn't expecting it. Then there was a turnover. Shifley shoots it. It's saved by Holtby, but it trickles over the goal line, and Schmidt can't get to it in time. That sucks. It's a 2-2 two -to -two game. Mark Shifley scores a goal. You kind of have to get those ones to go in if you're Shifley because, hey, you got to be good to be lucky, got to be lucky to be good, right? It's a tie game, and at this point, I'm just like, yeah, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. The Canucks are not going to win this game, and I thoroughly believe that in my heart because that's just kind of how these games go, you know? That's how it always goes. Hughes tries becoming a forward later on in the period. The Canucks draw a penalty, and Hughes just tries dancing around the offensive zone. He becomes the NTDP Michigan Quinn Hughes. And then the power plays... Oh, man, it doesn't really work. Only Hughes tries shooting. The Canucks try passing it. Then the Jets got a power play after that because... Of course they did. It was Neil Pionk with the Happy Gilmore shot. Holtby doesn't even see it. It goes right through him. The Jets have the lead. Holtby makes some crazy saves afterwards, though, to keep the Canucks on the game. And then the Canucks have another power play where Elias Pettersson tries off his one-timer. And it doesn't really work out the way he wants it to because first try, oh, it breaks the stick. Second try, oh, it's off the crossbar. Petey, how does this not work? Then Besser takes a penalty after the play. Oh, no. The power plays, bro. We didn't see any whistles at the end of the last game. This game, we're seeing all the whistles towards the end. Besser takes a penalty. The Canucks, in the last few minutes of the third period, they're really trying to get a shorthanded goal. You could really tell the penalty kill is aggressive. They're forcing it into the Jets' end. The Canucks kill it off successfully, and then Josh Morrissey shoves it over the glass. It's another Vancouver power play, and Elias Pedersen tries the one-timer again. This time it goes off the goalie mask, and the goalie mask breaks down. No biggie, they'll just try it one more time. And he finally scores on the one-timer, Elias Pedersen, with two goals in this one. Finally, the guy is breaking his shell. He is finally getting out here and getting some points. It's assisted by Hughes and Miller, so Miller with two assists on the night. Hughes, well-deserved assist. The guy was actually playing really well in this game. I have no complaints about Quinn Hughes in this performance. And then overtime happens, and you know what happens. It's Dubois, who comes in, he shoots and scores, and the Vancouver Canucks lose. You saw it coming. You saw it coming. Even after all the happiness that I felt after seeing this team tie it up, the hope wasn't there to see a win. I was like, oh, they could win. They really could. And they almost did, because Besser had a one-time chance in front. You sent it around for Pedersen, almost had a nice backdoor chance if Pedersen went to the net a little bit quicker. There was a chance for them to win, but in my heart, I was just kind of thinking, yeah, we're not going to win, aren't we? And Dubois, on the very first rush for Winnipeg, comes in and he scores. It's just like Johnny Gaudreau all over again. These Canucks goalies need to make saves in overtime, bro. Come on. That was a classic on-the-rush kind of play. Holtby was cheating to the middle. Like, I don't know why. There was a defender right there. But get the short side. And the short side was open. Dubois exploited it. He scores, and the Vancouver Canucks lose. The Canucks are 2-7-2 in their last 11 games. Is this another moral victory? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really think it is. They gave up a lead. They had it. They lost it. Come on. Experience Canucks hockey, ladies and gentlemen. I can't even think of a funny little keyword tagline to title this video. What's going to happen now? 
the Vancouver Canucks lose in overtime, and hey, at least they tied it, right? At least Hughes and Pedersen are getting points now, right? This team needs to stop blowing leads, you know? That's kind of my advice. Stop blowing leads. So obvious, but it can't seem to be done with this team. Talk to me in the comments what you thought. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Charles 99. And bye. <laughs>